Chapter 10 reviews the bonding models presented in high school, the Lewis and Vesper models, but goes beyond what you learned to explore atoms that form five and six bonds and more complex molecular entities. Please take a second now to reflect on how you learned the Lewis and Vesper bonding models in high school. There are two extremes. Some high school teachers make a big deal about Lewis structures and a bigger deal about Vesper structures. Other teachers blend the two together and focus on Vesper structures. Quite simply, Lewis structures by themselves often provide inaccurate information on molecular entities. The Vesper model projects the Lewis structure into 3D and is required to understand the properties and reactivity of entities. Understanding organic chemistry requires students to work with the 3D structures of entities. In teaching this chapter, I merge these two models together so that the end product is the 3D structure that you can use to understand the properties and reactivity of entities. We will see that the Vesper structure is only one step beyond the Lewis model. Avogadro is a program that allows users to visualize molecules in 3D. It is free, it is good, and it is powerful. I will be using Avogadro in class, and I encourage you to use it as well. Students taking organic chemistry can visualize the larger organic entities they are studying. Indeed, Avogadro can visualize entities the size of proteins. As you play with the program, you will realize that creating 3D structures is just a fraction of what this program can do. If you continue on in organic or physical chemistry, you will find this program useful. Avogadro interfaces to research grade computational chemistry programs, which you will see in advanced physical chemistry courses. In chapter eight, we looked at reactions in the context of obtaining a stable electronic configuration. Stable electronic configurations is a surrogate to the real determining factor, energy. In, this, in a chemistry context, entities ionize, form bonds, and react because the product energy is lower than the reactant energy. You already know about enthalpy. In Chem 102, we are going to introduce entropy and free energy. Free energy is the energy we need to consider. If you know the free energy change during a reaction, you can tell if the reaction is going to proceed to completion, reach equilibrium, or not react at all. While the Lewis Vesper model is a classical in nature, we know about the quantum mechanical nature of atoms. There are a lot of links between the Lewis Vesper model and the quantum model. I will be highlighting the links in this chapter. An electron domain is a group of bonding or non-bonding electrons. Bonding domains exist between two or more atoms. Non-bonding domains exist on a single atom. Each domain can contain up to eight electrons, with two, four, or six electrons being common. Non-bonding electrons are the lone pairs of electrons that exist around some atoms. From chapter eight, we know that orbitals contain electrons. An electron domain is a collection of one or more orbitals. It is not a coincidence that chemical bonds contain two electrons. Two electrons exist in one orbital. A single bond with two electrons is comprised of one orbital. A double bond with four electrons is comprised of two orbitals. And a triple bond with six electrons is comprised of three orbitals. Looking at bonding domains in more detail, 
localized bonding domains reside between two atoms. This is the common chemical bond. Delocalized bonding domains reside between three or more atoms. Delocalized bonding results in partial bond orders and resonance hybrid structures. Looking at the figure, the only difference between the two resonance structures is the location of the double bond and the negative charge. These structures are equivalent. However, neither of them is correct. When we experimentally analyze the carboxylic acid group, we see two equivalent oxygen. With the bond length between that of a formal single bond and a formal double bond. And both oxygens have the same electron density distribution. To get equivalent oxygen atoms, we average the resonance structures to get the resonance hybrid structure. The bonds are averaged and the charges get averaged. The average charge on each oxygen is minus one half and the average bond order is 1.5. I want to emphasize that the structures on the left do not exist. There is no rapid flipping back and forth. What exists is the structure on the right. And when we look at bonding from a quantum mechanical perspective, we will see that the structure on the right comes directly from a consideration of the available orbitals. Radicals are entities with a domain containing a single electron. We previously discussed the concept of core and valence electrons. Only the valence electrons are chemically active. The number of valence electrons depends on the position of the element on the periodic table. For n equals 2, there are four orbitals, one 2s orbital and three 2p orbitals which can hold a maximum of eight electrons. This is the basis for the octet rule you learned in high school. However, the octet rule only applies to three elements on the periodic table, carbon, oxygen, and fluorine. For every other element on the periodic table, stable entities can be produced with more or fewer electrons. Period one can hold a maximum of two electrons, Period two can hold a maximum of eight electrons, and period three elements can hold a maximum of 18 electrons. In my opinion, it is inappropriate to emphasize a rule, the octet rule, that applies to only three elements. If you were taught the octet rule as the central theme in chemical bonding, you were misled. I strongly recommend you abandon the octet rule for a more robust strategy that I will introduce shortly. We have already discussed oxidation state, which assumes the bonding electrons are transferred to the most electronegative atom. Formal charge is a calculation that assumes the bonding electrons are shared equally between atoms. The calculation of formal charge is shown here. Number of valence electrons minus the number of non-bonding electrons minus the number of bonds. Or if you prefer, minus one half the number of bonding electrons. Formal charge replaces the octet rule in determining the correct Lewis Vesper structure. In forming molecular entities, the correct structure minimizes the magnitude of the formal charges. In application, we also distribute the charges according to the atom's electronegativity, ensure the sum of the formal charges equals the charge on the entity, just like with oxidation states. And what we find is that if two adjacent atoms have opposite formal charges, it may be possible to form a bond. The concept of formal charge and forming the correct structure will make more sense as we apply them. So now we're just going to determine the formal charges of these three entities and form bonds to reduce the formal charges 
to zero. To begin, let us remind ourselves of the equation, the formula for calculating formal charge. Formal charge is equal to the number of valence electrons minus the number of non-bonding electrons minus the number of bonds or if you prefer minus half the number of bonding electrons. The first structure we would want to apply this to was that presented here. So to first look at the hydrogen, hydrogen has one valence electron. It has zero non-bonding electrons surrounding it and it is forming one bond. So the formal charge on the hydrogen is currently zero. On oxygen, oxygen has six valence electrons. There are four non-bonding electrons around the central oxygen, and it is forming two bonds. So it also has a formal charge of zero. And since the goal is to reduce the formal charges to zero, we are done. And that is the correct structure of water. The second entity we looked at had this structure. Given that starting structure, we need to calculate the formal charges. Hydrogen, one valence electron, zero non-bonding electrons, forming one bond, still has a formal charge of zero. The nitrogen has five valence electrons, it has two non-bonding electrons, and it is forming two bonds. So the formal charge on the nitrogen is plus one. On the oxygen, Oxygen has six valence electrons. This oxygen atom has six non-bonding electrons and it is forming one bond. So the formal charge on the oxygen is minus one. Since we have a plus one and a minus one right beside each other, we can possibly form a bond. Nitrogen and oxygen are both in n equals 2, so we can't have more than 8 electrons surrounding any given atom. And in this case, we don't. If we take a pair of electrons from the oxygen and use that to form a chemical bond. So that would give a new structure. Like that. And Hydrogen we haven't touched, so its formal charge is still zero. Looking at the nitrogen, we have five valence electrons, two non-bonding electrons, and it is now forming three bonds, so it has a formal charge of zero. And for oxygen, six valence electrons, four non-bonding electrons now, and it is forming two bonds. So it also as a formal charge of zero. So given that our goal is to minimize the formal charges and we have minimized them all to zero, this is the correct structure for this entity. The last entity we were asked to determine the formal charges for has this structure. So looking at the central sulfur, sulfur has six valence electrons, happens to have zero non-bonding electrons around it, and is forming four bonds. So sulfur has a plus two 
formal charge. The double bond to oxygen, 6 minus 4 minus 2, has a formal charge of 0. And the single bond to oxygen has a formal charge of 6 minus 6 minus 1, which is minus 1. So the central sulfur is plus 2. The double bond to oxygen is 0. And these two oxygens, which are the same, have a formal charge of minus 1. Note that we have a positive and a negative right beside each other. So we should be able to take two electrons and form a bond between the two. Also note that sulfur is not in n equals 2. So it can have more than eight electrons around it. So when we do that, we get the structure as shown. We already know that a double bond to oxygen has a formal charge of zero. And so we only need to recalculate the formal charge on the central sulfur. Six valence electrons minus zero non-bonding electrons minus six bonds gives it a formal charge of zero. So now we have reduced the formal charges to zero for this entity as well, and that is the correct structure of SO3.